And this is just the perfect setting for a ghost story, since if you look up in the sky, there is the moon, and it's almost close to midnight. And there are, uh, you have to know it before, uh, there are two things bef you need to know about Icelandic ghosts before I read this story. One thing is that they can't say the word God or Gvud in Icelandic. Uh, and the main character here is Gvudrun, so the ghost will not be able to say her name, since Gvud are the first three letters or God in, in her name. And the second thing about Icelandic ghosts, they will always repeat themselves. So here goes. Here's the story. It's not very scary at all. It's called the Deacon to Mirkau. There once was a Deacon to Mirkau, a farm in the north of Iceland, who had a fiancé called Gvidrun, and she worked for the priest at another farm in the north of Iceland called Bayesau. And during Advent, the Deacon wrote to Bayesau to invite Gvidrun to come over to Mirkau for Christmas. He had a horse with gray mane, which he called Faxi. It was agreed that he should pick up Gudrun on Christmas Eve. Before the deacon came and invited Gudrun, it had snowed heavily, and the lakes and rivers were covered with ice. But when he came to Bayesau, there was a massive thaw, and while he and while he lingered there, Hörgå, that is the river. Uh, swelled to a right, raging white water, and on it floated large chunks of ice. He rode back in the evening and was able to cross the Öxnadamsau, the river, on a snow bridge. But when he came to Hörgau, the ice had broken off the bridge, which he had used on the way. When he was one piece up river, he found an ice bridge. He rode over, but in the middle it broke, and he fell into the river. <laughs> the next morning, uh, a peasant from the neighborhood uh, saw a horse with white bridle below the hay meadow, and he thought that he recognized Faxi, the deacon's horse. He was very frightened, for he had seen the deacon trying to cross the river the day before, but not return. When he gets there, he fights. Faxi is all wet and bruised. Then he goes down river and finds the dead deacon on a promontory. On the back of the dead were injuries that probably stemmed from drifting ice flows. The farmer rushed to Mirkau and reported what had happened. The deacon was transferred to Mirkau and buried there the week before Christmas. Because the snow had melted and swollen rivers in Bayesau, no one know, knew of this there. And on Christmas Eve, the weather was finally beautiful, and floods in the rivers had fallen, so Gvidrun was looking forward to Christmas festival with her beloved deacon to Mirkau. She tried to look her best and was almost ready to leave when there was a knock on the door. <laughs> the woman who helped her with dressing went to the door, but saw nobody out there. Outside it was neither light nor dark, for the moon moved through the clouds and was alternatively covered <laughs> or so bright. <laughs> When the woman came back <laughs> and said she had not seen anyone, Gudrun said, This is someone playing a trick on me, but I will definitely go out. She was almost finished dressing up for the occasion, but had not yet put on her jacket. She put her arm in one sleeve and then, because she suddenly was in a hurry, threw the other half of the jacket on her shoulder. Outside she saw Faxi and a man with him whom they thought was the deacon. He helped her on the horse, then rode the horse, rose to the horse himself and sat in front of her. 
This way they rode for a while without speaking to each other. At Harko were high ice edges, and as the horse jumped over them, the deacon's head aired a little, and as the moon shone for a short moment through, as the clouds broke, Vilrun saw the naked skull. Then the deacon speaking with a hollow voice, Moon slides, death rides. Do not you see the white spot in the back of my neck? Garun, Garun. Gvavarun was very frightened and said nothing. They wrote without a word spoken, only when she, they, she arrived in Mirko and dismounted before the cemetery gates, the deacon said, Wait here, Garun, Garun, while I bring the Faxi, Faxi to the pasture, pasture behind the fence, fence. He then led the horse away, but Gvavarun looked at the cemetery and there she saw an open grave. Now frightened out of her wits and deeply worried, she reached for the bell rope at the cemetery gate and rang the bell. At the same moment, she was grabbed from behind, but it was her luck that she had only thrown her coat halfway over. Again, the ghost of the deacon grabbed her from behind so firmly that her jacket ripped at the sleeve seam. The last thing she saw of the deacon was as he fell into the open grave and the earth from both sides of him thrust over him. Meanwhile, Gwithrun rang the bell without stopping and finally the people rushed to the yard and led her into the house. She was completely beside herself because this had been a nightmare, although they had received no news of the death of the deacon. The people in Mirko then told her what had happened, and she told them what had happened on the right. When the people had gone to bed at night and the lights were turned off, the deacon came and attempted to be with his beloved Gwilru. There was so much noise by the ghost that the people could not sleep. For half a month after this, someone always had to be with Gwilru, and at night and watch over her. Even the pastor sat with her and read from the Psalter. Finally, they got someone from the neighboring town of Skagafjörður who knew how to exorcise ghosts. The exorcist managed to capture the ghost of the deacon and bring with violent incantations the spook into the earth. Finally, he rolled a great stone to the grave and there rests the deacon to this present day. Then the nightmare stopped and Gudrun recovered. Shortly the, thereafter she went back to by herself, but they say she was haunted by these events to the end of her days. And this was the ghost story, a very old one, of the deacon to Mirka. <laughs>